These videos are educational in nature and are designed to help people over 21 who smoke cigarettes switch to a less harmful alternative. <clears throat> All right, what's up everybody? Grim Green back here today. We're going to be taking a look at a billet box Boro Bridge or a Boro RBA. These things have so many names these days, but this one comes from Billy Billy. He makes a lot of panels. They also make a bridge. It's called the Billy Goat Bridge, and it's sort of its own little self-contained thing. This is one of those universally compatible in different Boro tanks. So I have an orange Boro tank ready to go. I have a Hoko E ready to go. I've been using this Billy Goat Bridge in restricted lung. Four millimeter, I believe, is what is in here right now. Listen, it, it, it's far from perfect, but it's a pretty good little flavor banger of a bridge. I've been using it, like I said, in, in restricted lung, like a four millimeter. I would like to experiment with this into a mouth to lung because in a restricted lung, the airflow got pretty turbulent and I wasn't super into it. Really interested to see how this performs as a mouth to lung. So let's just get into it. Uh, let's get down to the desk and get building. All right, it's honestly not really that complicated. Let's get into this Billy Goat RBA for Boro. It has an uh, airflow pins. Airflow pins, like all Boros, have airflow pins these days. It screws out of the bottom. And just, you know, always keep an eye on that peak insulator right there. I was correct. Four millimeters is what I was using. But I don't want to use four millimeters anymore. I want to use something much smaller, maybe a 1.2 millimeter. And there it is, 1.2 millimeter let's go so i'm just gonna screw this back in peak insulator is present good the billy goat is 510 threaded on the bottom so you can just screw it down to any 510 threaded device and get your coils you know built glowing all the good things i'm just going to continue using this coil that i had in here but you do have some flathead screws that open up for your coil to go in and look like a lot of billet box stuff there's not a lot of tolerance on this so when you are clipping those leads you're going to want them flush as, as flush as humanly possible, dig in there, make sure they are crazy flush. If they are not flush and you put this top cap on there, they are just going to short out. Now, if it'll focus, let's look at this big kind of kidney-shaped hole right here. That's where your liquid is going to be touching the wick. There's not really a wick catch cup per se. You just kind of want to put your wicks over that area. I'm also not sure if you're gonna be able to see that, but there is a slight difference in height all the way around the bottom of this cap. The taller part locks into the little notch on the outside. It is crazy small notch and tab system, crazy precise. The easiest way to do it is to set it on there, spin this until you feel it lock into place right there, and then give it a firm press down. You're not going to be able to look and see where these line up. It's indistinguishable. Like, you just cannot see it with the naked human eye. Threaded some BP Mods Provate cotton right through the center of this, and I am going to cut these wicks maybe a little bit out from the edge. So not quite to the edge, a little bit out. Because like I said, I'm just gonna try to thumb these on here, just have them over that sort of kidney-shaped juice hole right there. It's not the greatest design, if I'm being honest. I wish there was something in there to catch your wicks and just hold them in place a little bit. Let's see if the old liquid trick will work. I used to have to do this with K funds. You had to wet the wicks down and then stick them to the side of the deck so that they'd stay in place. Well, the juice trick does kind of work. All I did was just use the lubricated wicks and sort of press them where they need to be. Again, no wick catch cup, nothing that's gonna hold these wicks in place. All right, we're just gonna spin to win, and when we feel it, boop, lock into place. We're just gonna press that on. All right, it's firing, great. Let's get this into the Boro. It is a two-piece design, and I'm using my favorite Mums Orange Boro tank. Perfect, that just pops right on the O-ring on the bottom. I had to lubricate it up a little bit with some e-liquid. This goes in through the top, and then should go in right there. Boom, 
Perfect. We're basically done. We'll get that glass on and I'm just going to fill this up right now before I put it into the device. I'm very confident that this is going to this is this is going to work and because of the nature of the Hoko E, you can't really fill your Boro when it's in there. It's kind of annoying. So we'll fill it up now, save ourselves the trouble. I'm just gonna slide this inside. Perfect, locking nut, boosh. Not quite sure. I think we're gonna start this at like 13 watts. 16 watts, final answer. Well, that is the Billy Billy, the Billy Goat RBA with a 1.2 millimeter mouth to lung airflow inside of an orange mum tank inside of the Hoko E. This is just a great setup. Top it off with a dorky Oleg drip tip. This is mouth to lung nerdy maximum level. That is all there is to see down here. Let's get back out to normal view like we do. Let's give it a vap. So it's actually been about 48 hours since that last bit of video where I built up the Billy Goat. I just wanted to I don't know, spend a little bit, uh, you know, at least a little bit of substantial time with this before I finally pass judgment on it. And I think where I'm landing on the Billy Goat RBA is that the restricted lung, four millimeter, three and a half millimeter, does deliver some really nice flavor, but the airflow itself is so wildly sharp and turbulent that it makes me not want to use it as a restricted lung. In a mouth to lung, the airflow suddenly becomes beautiful and smooth. 1.2 millimeter, giving me a really nice rubber band effect. The problem is the flavor on this mouth to lung just isn't that good. It's fine, I can taste that this is Deep Cuts Guava, but it's not nearly as rich or dense or saturated as even like, as even you would get from like a mesh pod. Here's something unpopular that I think needs to be said. I get better flavor consistently from a mesh pod than I have with any really mouth to lung RTAs or boros in the last year or so. Don't get me wrong, the flavor is still good. I can tell that this is Deep Cuts Guava. I vaped a lot of it. I can taste that flavor in here. It's just not as pronounced as you would get uh, from uh, from like a mesh pod. Now, flavor aside, it's still a little bit fiddly of a bridge, man. It's got no place for your wicks to go. They just kind of fold over and just sit there above those holes. It does seem to work and wick just fine. It's just the struggle of getting your wicks into place and cutting those leads so they don't short out. You know, it's it's a bridge for billet box for Boro. So they do tend to be a little bit fiddly. This one feels very fiddly. And additionally, man, just those tabs. Those tabs are tiny, microscopic little tabs. You have to do it by feel. You couldn't possibly eyeball it. And even then, when they do kind of snap together, like eventually be a unit and come together, it doesn't feel nice. It feels crunchy and hard to push them together. I mean, I still generally like Billy Billy, and, and the Billy Goat is not a bad RBA, but on the stage of RBAs where there's hundreds of them now, dozens and dozens of them now, and I've probably used dozens and dozens of them now, the Billy Goat doesn't quite stack up in, in a lot of departments to some other bridges, so I think the banana stickers are going to end up at like a six. It does vape and it does give me some pretty good flavor, so I can't ding it too hard, but there's a lot of other aspects of this bridge that truly, honestly, I might just pass on. It's stiff competition out there in, in the Boro Bridge world, you know? Like 90% of the vape industry is going just straight to AIOs and Boros, and there's just a lot of competition there now. It kind of reminds me of the 2016s when there was just really, really stiff RDA competition, and RDAs were coming out like literally week over week over over week over week with like slight little differences and maybe little differences in the airflow and your decks a little bit deeper and you know it was just a lot of stiff competition and they all can't be knocked out of the park this is the end of the video because i'm rambling i can't do any vape budget hands you guys i can't do any aliens game but i'll say this if you're a cigarette smoker currently smoking cigarettes, hey, maybe you don't need to do that. There is a world of safer nicotine products out on the market. In the description of this video, I'm going to put links to just science and just education. This has been a grim green video. I don't know why I put it so far away. Stay smoke-free. 
every day. <coughs> it's like 10.30 and then I'm uh, just gonna smoke, so 